great to see you. It's great to see you too. Yeah, it's it's good, good to see you in person. <laughs> I know. It's great to be calling Jaime because you're one of the few people that like do it and it, it just feels natural, but it's great to see you. Thank you. It's too hard for me to look at your name and know that it's in Spanish I and say you Jamie. <laughs> 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 no, you look great. By Thank the way. you so much. Mm -hmm. I'm coming in hot off of a long drive from Nashville, but yeah. Um, yeah, so it's so good to be here. So good to see you, Emily. Yeah. So, so let's start with this. I mean, you said it's tomorrow, yeah. but I wanted to ask you, you know, about something that just inspires me about you, and it is just your, your resilience. Yeah. And like, just in your history, even when we talked last year and like this year and everything, you're a person that is just really resilient, and you just just have a great skill of overcoming negativity, adversity, yeah. and converting it into light. Oh, thank you. Is that a, is such is, a beautiful statement. Oh well, my God. I wanted to ask you yeah. about it. Like, mm -hmm. where does it come from? Like, where did it come from? Because I, I, I get the sense that you know that these are thoughts, mm -hmm. but your thoughts are not who you are. Yeah, yeah, like, absolutely. Like, where does it come from? It's just a really powerful thing. I think that a lot of it comes from, um, I mean, at least like within my life and my music career, mm -hmm. a lot of it just comes from a like a set, an inner knowing that I'm on the path I need to be on. Um, and uh, yeah. in terms of, of like, as long as I'm making the art and the songs and the connection, you know, the real heart of what I do at, as an artist is like about songwriting and storytelling and connection between people. And when I put that at the center, everything else kind of falls in place around it. And um, I feel like on a spiritual level mm -hmm. that that is what helps me ride the highs and lows of, you know, of the day-to-day -day life of being a touring musician, right? Yeah. You know, and especially some of the lows during COVID when we couldn't go out and tour, and now we're going back out on the road, and I'm like, you know, full trying throttle, to stay, right? yeah, full throttle, mm -hmm. trying to stay healthy, <laughs> you know, reconnecting with fans, like trying to rebuild our industry, right? Because sure. we're all in this place of like, sure wow, it's going to take a little longer to rebuild than we realized. Um, and uh, I think the other thing that helps me with resilience is connection to friends and people I know, you yeah. know, um, uh, like like close relationships with other people who, who um, are really positive people. I've always been a really positive person. Yeah. I, um, but, uh, yeah, I just... Um, uh, and then sometimes, sometimes things happen and you have no choice but to be resilient. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> or like... We um, have a choice how we look at those it's things. It's true. It's totally you true. you always pick to look at them in what does this mean for me, for my growth. Yeah, like, absolutely. Why is this to me, you know? I really do believe yeah. that everything mm -hmm. that we encounter in life can be an opportunity for, for growth, you know? I mean, sometimes like bad or things happen or annoying things happen or challenges happen and they're not it's not like you manifested them sometimes they just happen yeah. you know sometimes i just there was like it was really rainy today so there's a bunch of traffic on the way right and um but it's it's about how you respond to them and um and go like all right i could let all my energy uh flow towards anger and frustration yeah. and fear and anxiety and worry or i can use my energy in a more creative way to find a way around this thing. Yeah. Um, and I think, especially as a touring musician, there's just, I'm always, and, and as a musician in general, I'm always um, finding, like I'm encountering obstacles and going, okay, is this an obstacle that needs to be worked around? Um, is this me being too stubborn and I have, I'm trying to look at something one way, do I need to back up, zoom out, look at it a different way, mm -hmm. come at it from a different perspective? You're conscious of this. Yes. Mm -hmm. Like you're able to step away and like look at it. That, that's a super yeah. powerful thing. Totally. You're Absolutely. You're not a robot. You're not reacting. Right. And I, I think sometimes we get in these ways of thinking, right, like the music industry pre-pandemic, mm -hmm. we had ways as an industry that generally we did things, right? Like yeah. we had to tour when we were releasing an album at right. the same time. The formula, yeah. And now I think we're in this beautiful space where we get to go, wait, <laughs> um, do we have to do those things those way, mm -hmm. those ways? Yeah. Um, or can we create new rules and new paradigms, right? So yeah. like, um, uh, 
yeah, I'm about to announce a big project that yes, you've been teasing it. the official I've been teasing it. The yeah. official announcement is out on um, is out on Monday. I'm well, so excited. You, you can say it because this is going. Oh, great. Yeah, Amazing. It, 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 uh, this is going to go the week after American Fest. Perfect. So, so what is it? Um, so it's a it's a project of song. It's a song cycle that I wrote uh -huh. for the witches of Macbeth, oh. um, which I'm yes. so excited about. It's so fun. This is the first time I've actually spoken with any journalist oh, about I it. it. I love it. Um, and so uh, the project is called Built on Bones. Yeah. Um, and I wrote six original songs. Um, one of them is actually old gods which I put on my last record okay. um, but that's just one of the songs for the show and uh, I wrote it as a commission for a live theater performance of Macbeth last summer wow. in my hometown in Telluride uh -huh. um, and the songs were so fun and powerful and so many people connected with them that um, I decided to make I'm going to call it a little record. Phenomenal. It's not a full-length album. It's not an EP. It's like right in the middle. <laughs> it's 25, yeah, 20 minutes. It's phenomenal. I'm so excited so about exciting. it. It comes out October 28th. Oh, my God. Um, and it also features uh, two people who I love mm -hmm. dearly. Um, Alisa Amador. Yes, she's uh, great. She's amazing. Yeah. She just won NPR Tiny Desk yes, Contest. She she's and she's, she sings in Spanish and in English. Oh. We love her. Her songs are incredible. Love it. Um, and then also features my friend Lizzie Ross, who's mm -hmm. in the duo Violet Bell. Um, and they're going to be playing with me on my Rhythm and Roots set. Oh, so my gosh. I'm so excited. Oh, my God. I'm so excited. Oh, so it's really fun. They're my other witches. Um, and it's really my this. Other <laughs> they're my other witches. For Halloween. <laughs> exactly. Like, what are you going to do for Halloween? I'll be Emily's costume. Yeah, <laughs> totally. And it was like, it was kind of like this project had so much energy to it. Yeah. And it's not some traditional mainstream country Americana album. No. It is totally fun and creative and experimental, but when we felt that energy, when I felt that energy as an artist, yeah. uh, oh boy, and my whole team responded to that and said, yeah, why not, let's do this. Yeah. Right, and said yes to this really cool special project. And um, so I'm really excited for it. Um, and yeah, that's Thank you for sharing that. You're that welcome. Awesome. I'm so pumped okay. about it, you know. You. I know you have other stuff planned, so. Oh. Let me leave you with this, Emily. Uh, going back to the first point, you said a lot of really interesting stuff. And I was thinking, you know, Labor Day was just recently. And Labor, uh, you know, because you were saying so many fascinating things. I could talk to you for like an hour, like a I seminar. Know, me I too. could do like a seminar with you. Same. Um, labor, you think about it, besides love, yeah. is one of the most important things that you can give to someone. Yeah. Labor Day just happened. That's why yeah. I was thinking about it. And, you know, because your, your labor is your time, it's your energy, yeah. it's your focus. And what you do, you're talking about getting out on the road and all that. It's almost like your labor, you're giving light. Yeah. I, is, isn't that like part of like just like what keeps you pulling and yeah. growing? The fact that yeah. that your labor is a is, is a growth tool. Absolutely, know? yeah, yeah. It 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 just, I just it it um, gives back to me. Like yeah. I give, but it gives back it's to me. Back to you, threefold. Yeah, absolutely. It's an energy investment. Completely. Oh yeah. God, so <laughs> Thank you. It's so good to see you again. Thank you so much for your time. We're oh. so excited for your set. Tomorrow. My pleasure. It's going to be so fun. Thanks, I'm excited. Man. So, Jim, great to see you here yeah, in Bristol. You too. Thank you. Let's pick up right there. Let's talk about okay. Game Changer in a minute, which is an incredible album, and I want to talk about it. But we were talking off camera about the incredible chemistry that you have, you know, with Frank right? Rich and Lily May yeah. and, and Craig and, and, all, and all of them. Yes. And you were sharing some really exciting news. Yes, I, and I'm to backtrack a little bit. I met Lily May and Frank Rishi when they were literally kids. At the, there was a the IBMA Bluegrass Music Convention and Week used to be in Nashville. It was Kentucky then Nashville. It's moved to Raleigh, but I walked in the hotel, the host hotel downtown, and saw this family band of yeah. these kids. Lily May and Frank's sisters, and um, was just blown away. And I just said, "I listen. If you need a producer, whatever." I gave them a stack of CDs. It was just like I love the and Lily May and Peter Rowan and I jammed later. You know, and she was just How you know came that? up to here. I think Lily May was ten or eleven, maybe. Wow. So and Frank, I guess, was thirteen. And so anyway, then I followed, would see them on Lower Broadway. They kept playing. They got a record deal for a while. And um, 
Lily May, of course, has had a few uh, records out already right. and, and has a, uh, one coming out fairly soon. Right. And I just, I love them as people and as musicians. And I started having them sing harmonies with me on my record starting a few years ago. And I, it's, it's just a fantasy and a dream to get to play with them live. And they've been doing it more and more. And so I even, and, and I've, I've got a new album out that they're mm -hmm. singing on. And then a few weeks ago, I thought, you know what? I'd really love to do a group with them, a yeah. trio, yes. and focus more on Lily May yeah. and Frank. Yeah. Now, I can write and co-write the songs, sing harmony, yeah. maybe. So we've recorded 14 songs, Amazing. and um, uh, they're, I'm real happy about it. We still don't have a name yeah. for the group. I mean, yeah. I want to call it, you know, something. And so, um, I think maybe the best thing to do is to put out a single right. in a few months yeah. and then go from there and then when the album's ready. But uh, Lily Mae's about to have a baby yeah. and, uh, she, and she and this amazing guitar player, Craig Smith, mm -hmm. uh, have guy. gotten married. And so I want this to be kind of a family thing and so that we can all go out on the road and whether it's this band as a package or or Lily May yeah. her her thing and and my thing and we can share the band but I just I want to play with them anytime we can as much as possible so great that you realize this because <sighs> Jim, obviously you're amazing in your own right, prolific career, and so is Lily and, and the sisters and all them playing Layla's and all our yeah. But when I first saw you guys together, it, it, there is, it, it's certainly it's, elevated to another, there's magic, and I've told Lily this, there's magic. And yeah. there, and that's what we yeah. as, you know, performers, that's the ultimate thing, is to have somebody that you connect with like that. Absolutely. Let's talk about Game Changer for a minute. Okay. Jim. I mean, congratulations on this album. Thank you. It is mind blowing, Jim. I mean, I was hearing you like make new memories like like a week ago when you came uh -huh. out, and I was like, Jim, you're like at the top of your game. Well, thanks. Like, thank it, you. It's it's quite amazing that after thirty something albums, you know, I think you're hitting your peak. Like, Good. am I right or am I wrong? Like, well, feels... I feel like the last few years have been more. Um, uh, they've yielded more songs than I would have thought years ago, and Why I. Why do you think that is, Jim? I don't know. I I, I, I think world? I'm just really being able to focus more and more, right. and um, maybe as I get older, I'm just kind of getting to that place where making records, which I really love right. to do, it's just becoming, you know, more and more of a natural thing or something I don't know but I, I really it's it's uh, it's kind of mind-blowing to be in the studio and kind of stressful you know every time I go in a lot of times I'm writing right there the day before whatever and yeah. so it's it's nerve-wracking it's always been that way unless I've collaborated with somebody like Robert Hunter and we have those songs finished and then I go in but even then uh, I did about six records of collaborations with Robert Hunter and even for those records though I'd be in the studio and go you know write him go hey uh, casually just kind of I'm in the studio if you have anything <laughs> new and then he would come up with something yeah and send it and then I'd write a melody and um, so it's it's when you're in the studio you yeah. never know what might happen yeah. so so I'm not a musician so I'm fascinated by this that you're talking about so every time you start a new project do you have like that anxiety of like a new thing y yes you know? like you feel like you're in the void for a minute 
even if you have 30 albums behind you? Uh, it still feels, I still feel that wow. thing of like, hey, this is, I've got to deliver, you know, this is, this can't just be a mediocre record or something, so. I love it. Well, you're being so good with your time. You have a very busy day, but let me ask you sure. about Nashville. Okay. Because I think this, you're a perfect guy to ask this. I mean, there's a lot of talk. The Tennessee had this piece the other day about, you know, independent venues are in danger. Exit in is in danger. Uh, like in real danger. Yeah. Um, you know, the city's growing in leaps and bounds, but, you know, Mercury Lounge closed a few minutes ago. There's there's a lot happening in Nashville, yeah. you know? Um, you've been in, you know, you've seen Nashville through a long time, through, through its growth. Where do you fall in, like, you know, the city's growth and also the culture, like, Music City and, and, and like, where it's at right now? You know, it's, I guess it remains to be seen, mm -hmm. but I think where it's going to go, I mean, I... I and there's no stopping construction, you know, but I, I just, it, it uh, gets me, you know, when I'm driving on, it's like, wait a minute, where did this series of apartments just come from? And what that old building is kind of gone. <laughs> and yeah, I mean, it's, it's just, but that's the nature of right. our world and, and we are, you know, we can't do anything about it, but I, I, I know, I mean, I, Nashville is music city, you know, as far as recording mm -hmm. and live, there's, I, I'm just hoping, I mean, luckily there's still a fair amount of venues um, for the local musicians and the touring artists coming through but it it can't lose that so yeah. i hope that the powers that be will still set aside places Absolutely. that that you know because if, if if all the live music venues are gone what's the point i mean the the great thing about nashville right now is that its uniqueness with the concentration of writers, singers, producers, you know, pickers. And, you know, people are still coming all the time. And I would never discourage anybody also from moving to Nashville. Uh, and it's become such a, it, it's not any more of like, oh, I'm a country musician, I'm gonna go to Nashville. It's every genre, really. People right. are oh, yeah. just moving to Nashville. Mm -hmm. And so I, I still think it's a great place to go, um, but I don't know what'll happen. I don't know if like, yeah. you know, Mattis, it, East Nashville right. is a very cool place where people would kind of move there for the first time. It's spreading out to Madison, which yeah. is a great place. There will probably be other sub, you know, places within 20 or 30 minutes, but, um, you know, live music is so important, and it's so important for the aspiring musician as well as somebody that's been doing it for a long time. Absolutely. It's like you have to have that outlet. And also the music lovers have to have that place where they can just go, oh, so-and-so's playing tonight at eight, and then at 10 o'clock, so-and-so's playing. I'll, I'll go see both, right. you know, and luckily you can still do that to some extent, but um, I don't know if some other place, you know, like I, I've always uh, championed Bristol, for instance, as such a, there, there's an energy here that, that is, to me, is really un, mistakeable and I see Agreed. a place like Bristol also having more places for people to play mm. more you know maybe somebody from Nashville it's like well I think it's you know I think it's time to move I've I've stayed here I'll go someplace else we'll Bristol seems good so yeah. I think you know there's different really cool places Floyd Virginia has a really cool yeah. old-timey scene. Um, I'm also a big acoustic music and old time music and bluegrass music lover. So sure. I think 
you know, what it really takes is for one either writer, singer, or band right. to go someplace, and then more and more people Agreed. start coming. We'll see what happens, Jim. I could talk to you for 17 well, hours, me but too. it's been a well, pleasure to have you. Thank you. Thanks you so too. Much, Jim. Thank you.